Uh, well, good afternoon, everyone. Overnight, an intense storm uh, inundated Port Augusta with over 59 millimetres of rain in a three hour period, with hundreds of call outs to the emergency service, uh, including a number of swift water rescues for people that are caught in flash flooding. Further, nor further north, uh, Ernabella across the uh, APY lands was hardest hit with over 106 millimetres of rain. And what that's led to is a uh, quite a large number of outback roads um, becoming impassable. The Stuart Highway remains closed at Glen Dambo with water 400 mil deep over the pavement and we expect it to be at least 12 days until the water has subsided and restoration works can commence. Engineering options are being explored to accelerate this time frame by draining or pumping the water and that's been examined through the Department of Infrastructure and Transport. Rail damage to the east of Tarkula is being restored by ARTC and our current estimates are that the repairs to the track will be complete by the 17th of February. The overnight rains have not impacted their current operations. The Air Force has uh, been able to deliver 20 tonnes of emergency supplies to Cuba PD. That's all gone smoothly and the last of the flights will be late today. It's been a well executed and collaborative effort for all involved and I'm very grateful for the help and support of the Australian Defence Force. Outback areas north of Port Augusta are sodden and we're expecting further heavy rains throughout the day, particularly in the northern parts of the northeast pastoral and northwest pastoral districts. Many roads are closed, impassable or dangerous. Please stay away. Or if you're in these locations, stay put and rethink non-essential travel. I'm going to hand over to uh, the Bureau just for a bit of an update on the outlook. Good afternoon. So we continue to monitor this very heavy rain and storm event as it progresses across the, the far north of our state. In the last 24 hours, we've seen some significant rainfall totals, uh, including the 106 millimetres at Ernabella. We've also seen 87 millimetres at Tyon, 75 millimetres at Todd Morden, and 53 millimetres at Udendata. So some very heavy rainfall. Through the remainder of today, uh, we still have that severe weather warning current, and that band will progress across the, the far north of our state before clearing uh, the far northeast uh, as we move through the early part of uh, Wednesday. So further falls in the 50 to 80 millimetre range are possible and maybe even higher falls with thunderstorms. Further south, uh, as was mentioned, Port Augusta copped a very intense uh, thunderstorm yesterday evening around 8pm. We actually saw 50 millimetres of rain in just 50 minutes so uh, there's some quite intense rainfall rates uh, you know, up above that 1 in 100 year uh, event for Port Augusta. So over the coming days we'll see a return to more of a typical summertime pattern with a high pressure system maintaining fine weather right across South Australia after the rain clears. But it will take some time for this water to flow down through these inland water courses, infiltrate and evaporate. So we may need generalised flood warnings to continue for some of the larger inland river systems including the Cooper Creek where there's already a generalised flood warning in place and that may be extended to the Warburton River as well. So it may be uh, some time before we see that water uh, gradually dissipate through some of these inland areas. You got any questions? How serious, to describe how serious this is for residents up there? Yeah, look, it's certainly a very significant event for, for our state. So uh, if we look at the, the event as a whole, I mean, it's always hard to classify each event uh, of heavy rain through the inland parts, but as the event of a whole, we probably only see something like this once every two or three decades. So uh, I believe back in 1989 there was a very similar event and, and maybe have to go back much further than that uh, even. There's been some heavy rainfalls at Pukaja up in the APY. Do you have any readings for that locale? Uh, yes, so Ernabella Pukaja uh, received 106 millimetres in the 24 hours to 9am this morning. Uh, they also had some rainfall uh, prior to that, so up to around 120, 130 millimetres for the event today. Would you say this is going to get worse? Uh, no, the event uh, as a whole uh, will ease in the coming days as that rain band clears, but through those uh, far northern areas, you know, it just remains to be seen how much rain they get today 
uh, and, and what some of those larger river systems near the Northern Territory border look like. And, and we'll get some good intel uh, once the cloud and rain clears and we get a, a, some satellite images just showing how much water's out there. When was the last time Ernabella had this much rain? Uh, look, Ernabella had, had uh, quite a large amount of rain uh, with the, the last uh, system that, that went through just uh, over uh, a week ago now, but I don't have exactly how much uh, it had. Um, certainly the, the far northwest of our state uh, is more prone to these heavy tropical downpours and, and it's not uncommon to see 50 or 100 millimetres through that area. Are you um, aware of what's causing this type of weather out there? Yeah, so look, we've seen a lot of moisture right across uh, the north of the continent, spilling into South Australia. Uh, it started with ex-tropical cyclone Tiffany, which came in from the north. Uh, since then we've seen uh, another tropical low form up near uh, the north um, of WA, up around the Broome area. Uh, and we've just seen that rain and storms and moisture feed in from that low uh, across the north of our state. And are you Mr. Bini, can I just uh, ask uh, Mr. Bini a question about the circumstances up in ABY? And you've got a sit rep about the infrastructure around Nurnabella and Cookature and how bad it might be up there? Yeah, there's been a lot of rain across that part of the state. And the advice we've had from uh, SAPOL is that all the outback roads across APY at the moment are impassable. And uh, the townships have any uh, sit rep on how they're bearing? Look, at this stage we don't have any reports of significant damage and we're just encouraging people to stay put until those roads become safer. Um, what about the airports? I know there's a few people up there with COVID at the moment. Is there, are there any provisions if people are needing to get to hospital in Adelaide? Yeah, certainly uh, SA Health are uh, dealing with a number of uh, COVID patients and repatriations. Um, this particular weather system uh, is causing some challenge for that, but we're working through uh, which air drones are open and SA Health will be progressing the uh, repatriation of uh, COVID patients uh, as the weather permits. How many call-outs have you had in the far north? Look, in the far north, the, uh, the number of call-outs is relatively low um, in terms of calls to our triple zero one three two five hundred. In general, those communities are, are highly resilient. Um, most of our call-outs last night uh, resulted from the very severe storm uh, in Port Augusta uh, where we saw hundreds of um, calls for help to the 000 line, the 132500 line and a number of swift water rescues needed to be undertaken to save people from uh, flash flood waters. Have you been noticing that people are driving through flood waters? We've seen some vision overnight of you know, people are still trying. What's your, what, what's your message to them? Look, it's really disappointing to see that some members of the community are just not heeding the message. Driving through floodwaters can be one of the most dangerous things anybody can do in a severe weather event. It's the leading cause of death for flooding. So I just encourage people to drive to the conditions, obey the road signs, and do not drive through floodwaters. Any in, 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 in indication yet if you might need to send uh, a support crews up to Moomera or Port Augusta? Yeah, so uh, earlier in the week we pre-staged a number of crews out of Adelaide um, into the north. We sent a team of SES uh, first responders uh, by air to Cooper Pedy, and we've had swift water crews uh, with rotary wing support staging out of Port Augusta. Uh, that decision uh, proved to be um, very useful last night with that flash flooding and severe weather damage across Port Augusta. And these were people who stranded in cars and the like? Yeah, that's correct. There were four people uh, rescued from cars that got, uh, they came unstuck in the floodwaters. With more rain expected from here on in, what are the next steps? The next steps really are to encourage the community to stay safe, to stay put if they're in those locations and not to visit the area. But what will you be doing, sorry, any, any plans over the next few days? Um, across the whole emergency service sector, there's a whole range of activities that have been undertaken. We're very focused on getting the roads reopened, particularly the Stewart Highway, and we're supporting ARTC uh, with anything it needs to accelerate the restoration of the rail. Just in relation to Port Augusta, I think I counted 80 call-outs in under an hour last night. Just how much pressure did that put on your service? Just describe how you handled it. Look, it was a, a tremendous uh, effort from right across the emergency services, police, SES volunteers, CFS volunteers and metropolitan firefighters that were all um, employed in responding to the community from that event. Um, we don't have large numbers of response crews in that area, so having the extra resources from uh, Adelaide certainly helped. What are the plans to get supplies to the community at Umatata and 120 people there? So we have a far north zone emergency support team that's uh, staged out of Port Augusta. That team comprises 
uh, is led by police and has representatives from the emergency services and local councils. And through that team, uh, we're maintaining close contact with all those remote and isolated communities. At this stage, the, the Zone Emergency Support Team is satisfied that uh, those communities have sufficient food supplies, acknowledging that they are short on for fresh food, veggies and meat. But there's plenty of dry stock, there's plenty of tinned and frozen. And so at this stage, we're quite comfortable with the food supplies for most of those communities. Having said that, as this event protracts and the, uh, and the roads remain closed for longer periods, we will be needing to look at resupplies potentially in some areas. On the egg rice scenario, uh, is, is, have you, are comms still uh, available out of that zone or are you sort of uh, down to that level of information? Uh, no, there's good communications from out of that zone. Um, over the last 48 hours we did have some communications interruptions on uh, Air Peninsula, but they've largely been resolved now. How long can you expect to be transporting food out to these regional communities? Look, we're working hard to get the uh, Stuart High, Highway uh, reinstated. We're also looking at freight routes in from Northern Territory and certainly uh, those routes are open. Uh, we have a resupply of diesel coming into Coober Pedy from Darwin uh, in the next day. We are also working with Metcash on opportunities to resupply Coober Pedy via Alice Springs. Do you have an idea of what the estimated damage bill is for that part of the region? Um, the state has established a, a recovery a working group. We're starting to aggregate data from local councils, uh, from state agencies. Um, but at this stage it's way too early to uh, put a figure on the damage bill. So the rail repairs to the 17th of February, is that one <coughs> stretch of line or each damaged area is going to be repaired by that date? Look, there are 18 areas where there's been significant damage to uh, that rail and uh, that damage has caused a disruption to all rail traffic to Darwin and all rail traffic to West Australia. ARTC have commenced restoration works at both ends and uh, at this stage it's progressing well. They've assembled the contractors, the heavy plant and equipment and the materials they need to get the job done. Uh, they'll have a better idea towards the end of the week as to whether that 17th of February target is going to be met or indeed if they're progressing well they may be able to bring it forward. But at this stage uh, they're working towards the 17th. In terms of sending supplies via flight, are you suggesting we won't see any more of that from the ADF in the coming days? Look, it's a bit too early to say. At this stage we are uh, working closely with a number of partners on an alternative route to deliver uh, road freight into the north of the state to bypass the current uh, stretch of Stewart Highway where we've got the inundation. Um, it's unclear as to whether that's going to be feasible but we've certainly got people uh, looking at that and we've got Defence uh, examining options uh, with regard to some of the roads within the uh, Woomera prohibited area. Um, look, I couldn't put an exact figure on it. We've got quite a number of crews that have staged throughout the north. Uh, there would have been at least 20 additional uh, first responders in Port Augusta last night. But can I just say, um, SAPOL, in addition to the current COVID-19 response, is coordinating the efforts of various agencies both in the region and back here in Adelaide in terms of the current weather event that uh, we've been discussing this morning. Um, I just want to... Um, um, pay respects and acknowledge the, that there are a significant number of agencies involved in this response. We have um, obviously SES, we have DIT, we have engineering, uh, the support of the ADF which has been mentioned, the RAF, PERSA, SA Water, Department of Industry and Trade. Um, this is a significant event for the state. Just because it's not happening here in Adelaide doesn't, doesn't mean that we're, we're not extremely concerned about the communities. Um, the, the resilience that we've seen in those communities is greatly respected and we're taking this incident very seriously to support them, not just in the immediate response, but in the relief efforts and in the ongoing recovery efforts, uh, which will play out over the coming months with the damage that's occurred. And so I just want to acknowledge that, that effort and it will be ongoing. Okay, good, thank you.